welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. Remember to use the promo code DNVR25. You'll get 25% off your entire purchase of that CBD infused, deliciously rich, and potentially life altering Strava Craft Coffee. I'm your host, Drew Creaseman, the managing editor of DNVR Rockies. With me, as always, is beat writer Patrick Lyons. And on this episode, we get you all all caught up, all up to speed on all things Colorado Rockies minor leagues below the major league level. We're going to get a little deeper into the draft than we were able to. We were obviously able to kind of live react to Benny Montgomery the night of, but we'll dive into some of the rest of it, get a little deeper in that conversation, and just get you updated on what's been going on down on the farm system for the Rockies past couple of weeks. Always good, especially in these years when uh, the major league team isn't doing too much. We know we're all looking for the future, and and so we're going to be taking a big long look at that future, uh, especially those Fresno Grizzlies who've been hot, hot, hot lately. But first of all, Patrick, how, how are you doing, man? How's it? Feel? We're we're out of it now, right? If the full week of the All Star festivities and that first series after or behind us, this kind of day off here to regroup, and it feels now fully in the books. We can take a look now at the future and it's just uh i don't know man it feels like a, a good time to be, you know the state the rockies are in right now but kind of to take back uh, that step back the thirty thousand foot view as people like to say we're in a really interesting place here in team history it is and there's definitely some promise right now for the colorado rockies in regards to their farm system this this past draft it might be a, a future that's more four or five years away than two three but we'll break break down all of that, and there's there's definite excitement, uh, bottom line. And yeah, today's a good day. All right, Dodgers series went down. They were able to sneak a W out of there before a, a really short two game set with the Seattle Mariners. Will be on Marquez no hitter watch. Of course, that means he'll probably give up a leadoff double to JP Crawford or something like that. Right, and that'll be all. Uh, it'll be all over me. That's that's fine. I'll, right. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, play. that's on that's on you, right? Yeah. But until that happens, I'm on Marquez no hit watch against the Mariners. Uh, over the course of the next two days, another off day on Thursday. And so, yeah, this is kind of uh, rejuvenation in the second half. What's going to take the Rockies across the finish line? What are they going to do at the trade deadline? This is a season of transition. This is a, a season of maybe trying to use some of your assets to build even bigger and better assets for the future. So, yes, what a better time to look at the the true assets that they have as far as their prospects in regards to this most recent draft where they got 20 guys instead of just – six from last year actually they got 21 right. guys this year as opposed to the six from last year uh and and four levels of minor league baseball and then some uh because there is more than just the four teams that i think everyone has been studying but there there's a little bit more than that and and maybe we'll scratch the surface with that so yeah uh, there's a lot that there's a lot as you said that's colorado rockies baseball that doesn't just take place at coors field right there's one other meta comment that i want to make here before we dive into the draft itself and that is just to know and again i don't do these things i think some people do this for i uh, think i do this like to be vindictive or to say hey i was right and you were wrong or whatever it's merely to point out and remember how we have these conversations and the things that we are or are not sure i did want to point out that there was a very quick pivot from a couple of weeks ago the general consensus being the colorado rockies were really going to screw up this draft because they just didn't have time. The GM had stepped down. John Weil and Zach Wilson had left. And the the you know running theory was that Bill Schmidt was just going to have too many things going on, fingers in too many pies, right? And he wasn't even really going to be able to run the draft room the way he had been in the past. And that this draft was probably going to be a disaster for the Rockies just because of the sinking ship and people abandoning and all the stuff that we've been hearing about, right? And then... As it went down, it didn't turn out to be that way. And now it's, it's obviously going to be a little bit up to interpretation. We're about to dive into the specifics of it now, how well they actually did. And some people are going to think, but but reading around, looking whether Jonathan Mayo, Jim Callis, um, Kyle McDa Kylie McDaniel, you know, they're all, they, they rated good to great at the draft. And it's worth pointing that out, that, you know, a lot of people pivoted immediately into, well, now Bill Schmidt's going to screw up the trade deadline without ever like fully turning around and saying actually this last thing that we were certain was going to be a disaster not only wasn't a disaster but it's something that looks like the rockies did again either well or very very well 
Yeah, and, and really the, the second part of the drafting is the developing, right? It's draft and developing. So kind of, kind of to your point, right? And, and, and that's where maybe you say, oh, maybe the 2021 draft, you know, did uh, rather didn't come off without a hitch. Uh, but well, that's, that's later on. It's did you, you know, did you draft the right guys? And so far, as you said, you know, they, they've gotten a lot of praise. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about those guys. I, I think ultimately, you know, Jaden Hill and the situation there um, with, with him needing Tommy John surgery and, and being one of the top three college arms really going into the season for Colorado to have, have gotten him with their, their second pick, you know, it goes uh, a long way. Um, a lot of interesting like things definitely from Efren to, to Michael Porter Jr. That's a really, really interesting comparison. Uh, yeah, you're investing five. in a guy that's still, yeah. you know, banged up. I think in a lot of ways, you know, that's that's what the Blue Jays did, you know, several years ago when it came to Jeff Hoffman, where they said, Hey, he's a guy who has Tommy John, probably could have gone a little bit higher. He ended up falling uh, to them and uh was of course included in the Troy Tulowitzki deal. But you know, we we won't know that necessarily the second part of, of that, but for being shorthanded and and for you know you, you can't say that you know in, entirely that the Rockies organization wasn't impacted by being shorthanded. Obviously, that has some impact. But that being said, I, again, you're right. They they did a very uh, good job with the, with the with the young guys that they were able to get. Only took one you know high school player, uh, Benny Montgomery. That was it. You right. know, um, so it, it is interesting to see that you know for everything that people have been asking us on, on Discord. Uh, that's one of the things I've been excited about with some of the questions that we ended up getting from yeah. our subscribers. Uh, at the dnvr.com. They, they got a direct pipeline and we'll address those questions where the angels went 20 for 20 on their draft picks uh, going with uh, pitching and, and obviously sure starting did. pitching. Some of those guys aren't going to, you know, make it entirely as a, uh, as a rotation guy, but the Rockies went 20 for 21 in drafting college players that are a little bit more polished. Uh, I think that could suggest that maybe the Rockies um, maybe I, maybe identified the fact that, you know what, we might be having some uh, issues with developing players or we're reconfiguring things. That I think a lot of teams are having that uh, going down right now where they're like, well, you know, we, we do have less places for uh, our they're prospects to play at. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how can we necessarily develop this high school player? You know what? We need them to go away for two, three years to college, to be more of a finished product. And then we'll draft them. I think it also speaks to, again, being shorthanded, where, um, you know, with the pandemic last year, you didn't get to see uh, juniors play in, in high school. Right. Uh, again, right. all teams all teams had that issue, I think, to a degree. So Colorado kind of saying, all right, well, look, we got our eye on Benny Montgomery. He's a guy that we can project, um, you know, maybe not to the same level of a, of a Zach Veen, even though he did go one pick sooner uh, than Veen did last year. You say, all right, well, um, you know, we have a better feel on these college guys because we've been watching them now much longer. We've been watching them since high school, right? right? And so we feel more comfortable with who these guys are rather than saying, shoot, we only got to see a guy for maybe two months as a senior, maybe popped up out of nowhere. There's just more question marks. Uh, and again, all teams, I think we're dealing with that, but I think that's one of the reasons why you saw the Rockies go so extremely college heavy in 20 of their 21 picks. Uh, and it was uh, my out, my, my out. Where are we going? My in and my out. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I thought that was a, a really smart thing for them to do uh, in, in a lot of ways. Obviously, it comes down to the individual players, but I, for all the reasons you just mentioned, um, you know, e even especially when it comes to the pitching, when you look at the guys that they've had success with uh, in the recent past, uh, they've been college pitchers like. John Gray and and Kyle Freeland and this isn't including the guys that have come over in trades like you know Marquez or whatever. I guess that there are other exceptions. Sensatella kind of coming from the DSL and all of that stuff. But uh, you know their high school get you know the the Riley Pine and you know Brendan Rogers. We're starting to see it now, but it's been a longer, tougher process uh, with him. And so whether it's them not totally trusting their development process or just not even knowing with Zach Wilson stepping away 100% who's going to be in charge of that next year. And, and you may, maybe want to have guys who are a little bit more developed. But the other thing that we know is the Rocks actually do have a, a whole lot of really good coaches at the minor league level too. And the guys who are on the ground level doing the, the daily work. And it's why guys like 
and we're going to get into this in a bit, like Zach Veen and Drew Romo and Michael Toglia and these players are doing so well. And it's like, well, they didn't deal with Zach Wilson like on a day-to-day basis. In the long run, that question needs to be solved. You need philosophy, you need direction, you need all of those things from an organizational standpoint. But on a day-to-day right now, the Rockies still have some pretty great coaches out there working with these guys. So I'm going to be fat. And, and I think that's a good way, like you just said, to kind of walk in between that line. So let's get a bunch of college guys. The one guy who we're going to dream on his tool set right next to Zach Veen, and we're going to apparently hyper-target this outfield defense situation, which I'm I'm very curious about. Um, and, and as you know, I've been talking, I've, I've thought for, for a long time that – the, the biggest problem that the Rockies need to solve on the field is normalizing their environment. However they do that, whether it's making the field smaller, which I think would be the easiest way to do it, building your team better to take advantage of it by having a bunch of speedy, toolsy, uh, athletic guys, especially in the outfield, who, who are great defenders who help your pitchers at every step of the way. Um, and, and so if you're going to have those two guys roaming around in the outfield, uh, and that's like the one chance you're taking here. And that's kind of the way you put it. Although Jaden Hill is also a chance. You've got, he's a second pick. He's, he's, you know, but that's more like, like with health or whatever. It sounds like the, all the prognostications I've read have been, this guy could have gone one, one if he had been healthy. And so uh, again, you know, back to the MPJ comparisons, does it turn out if he, if he gets his health under wraps, then you're looking at a, a great draft here for the Rockies. Um, yeah, player, players with Jaden Hill's ability level don't, you know, readily, you know, become available outside of, you know, those those early selections. Like the Rockies, you know, lucked out a bit with with Zach Veen, you know, falling to them last year at nine. And you say, ah, eh, those guys, you know, typically might not fall that far. Uh, I think the same would be true for Jaden Hill if he if he wasn't hurt, he might not have been available for Colorado at eight. And you say, well, wait a minute, how is that true? What about Kumar Rocker? That's the one that that's will. The, that's the one that we makes just have fun. to wait and see. I will say yep. that I would have preferred if they if they did select Kumar Rocker Same. over Benny Montgomery, um, but we will wait and see. Particularly because they they did draft, uh, you know, Rocker three years ago. Uh, he knew he was going to Vanderbilt, so they just kind of did it as sort of a draft and follow. Like, hey, just so you know, you know, we got your eye, our eye on you, and and that's you know very common practice. But for for it specifically to have been Colorado, not another team who never got a shot to even select Rocker for the yeah. Rockies to now go, okay, you can have him now. You actually can have that guy that you were hoping on and then to let him yeah. pass is definitely going to be a story to watch. It it'll, will definitely it'll be, be an interesting, interesting narrative. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to chase down there, because I, I heard a rumor, and I literally – and this is like I think – like I literally overheard people – talking at all-star week right it's like this literally but i heard there might have been some signability questions there that that may have been a, a big thing is that the, the rockies did not believe that they were going to be able to sign kumar rocker particularly for what they wanted to spend it may have been a situation where it was like i want seven million They're like we're spending five here and that was just the end of that and so um if that's, yeah, that's the 100%. issue then, then you really under that's a hundred percent right. Um, I, th- I think there wouldn't have been a problem with signing him. Like he's, he wasn't going back to Vanderbilt for another year, but what that means as far as quote unquote right. signability is this idea that if you sign him and he says, well, I don't care that I fell to eight. Uh, here's, here's my price. Here was my number. That was one of the reasons why Khalil Watson ended up slipping back to the Marlins, uh, at, at 16, where he, you're going to look back at that draft and go, he was a top five guy and, and some people had projected him to be top five. But if you pay Rocker what he wants, or even if you give him the entire slot value or go over slot, uh, which we may need to get in and explain that to some folks, yeah. what does that do to the rest of your draft board? You get right. Kumar Rocker as your, your, your pick there at eight overall. And then for the rest of the draft, instead of taking, let's say, you know, you're at, you're at uh, the 41st pick, and say let's let's pick the forty first best guy, or let's even pick. Oh my gosh, this guy is the thirtieth best player on our board. Right. He may want to get. He may ask for thirty thirtieth uh, pick uh, value. So right. where you have to make up that money at some point. So it's almost like oh my god, this thing fell to me, and and kind of uh, is is on our plate. If we sign him, if we draft him, we got to sign him, and 
what does that do to the rest of our draft? That throws everything out the window. Now right. we're calling up guys saying, Hey, would you take this money? It's, you know, we're going to take you at this number and yeah. here's, here's the, uh, the value of it. We're going to, we're going to give you a million less. And now they're scrambling and they're shorthanded. They can't do that. So I, I yeah. like you said, signability, like that's a, that's a major wrench in the works and why you see some guys yeah. fall to the second and third round high school right. kids um, more than anything. And you just go like, how is this guy still available? Well, because he had a price, he had the flexibility to yeah. go to college and Kumar, and, you know, Rock has this same flexibility to go back as a senior and he wasn't going to do sure, that. But, but the bottom line yeah. is you got to pay his price. And if you're no, not going to do that, yeah. it's, it's a problem. Yeah. And like Will said, and, and AJ had pointed out our, in our Discord, and that the scouting reports were really fluctuating on him. The the now they didn't take then a uh, completely risk free pick. They still chose a super toolsy high school player instead. So it's not like they went risk free, but they solved at least one of those pro the problem you were just talking about in a massive way. It took many, Benny Montgomery and thought, hey, if this works out. This is a perfect solution to one of our biggest problems. If not, well, at least we can take everybody else we want to this draft, sign them, and those guys can really pan out for us. So we're going to get back into the details of some of these other interesting guys in a second. But before we do that, I have to toast. I've still got Strava Craft Coffee on this day, a little earlier in the day for us here on the live. Make sure you're joining us live on the YouTubes and whatnot. But you can toast your Breck Brew and your Breck Celsius to the names of the Colorado Rockies. 2021 MLB draft. They got some fantastic ones. Get your Breck Celsius and Breck Brews down at your local King Supers or liquor store. If you're out here by the DNVR. Or you get a much bigger for me. Subscribe. Our.com will send you out a free shirt when you sign up for that annual subscription. You get access to our Discord channel, all kinds of other cool stuff. Do become a member today. And yeah, toast. How exactly how fast Ninja Cow wants to know is Benny Montgomery? And also, can we nickname him Mount Benny? Thought <laughs> hmm. so we'd be going uh, with Benny the Jet. Would be, yeah. Would be, yeah, he's got he's yeah. got above average average speed. So, you know, 60, 65. Uh he's he's got a lot of two-way upside. I think that's kind of the thing about him is that yeah. You know, one of the players that I, I haven't heard these comps, but I imagine uh, we will is is Phillies. Uh, I think he was the first overall pick in 2016, uh, Mickey Moniak, who was a high school player that almost was a little bit off the board. And oh, yeah. again, you go, oh, first overall pick. Oh, is he going to be the next Griffey Jr.? Is, is he going to be like A-Rod? And no, he, again, it just kind of fits the, the the scheme and whatnot. And again, he's he only started scratching the the big leagues this, this past year, and he's been more of, of a defensive first guy, but he's still developing. And man, it's it's – it's hard, man. Drafting and developing players in the minor leagues is hard. It's it's one of the reasons why you you rather the quantity than quality, right? You would say, look, I got to get a little bit of everything just to kind of cover my butt because you got to field a team. Like for as you know, as rough as the farm system might be right now, uh, particularly just at the higher levels, you go, well, what would the Rockies be like right now if they didn't, you know, develop? Again, not these young guys that are on the team, the lost boys, right? They're just inexperienced. But like, what if Jonathan Daza wasn't there? What if Josh Fuentes wasn't there? Guys of like a certain age, right? And again, some right. of those were lottery picks and, and, and Fuentes being undrafted free agent. But like, look, you you need bodies to fill out a team. And they they take they take up a, a, a space on the roster and sometimes they become all-stars. Sometimes they develop in that capacity and you almost never know. So you need a little bit of everything all over the board. And it's kind of interesting, like if, if you look at Keith Law and, and, and I find him to be one of the, the, the better you know, prospect pundits or, or draft evaluators, he actually had on his board, as just for talent, uh, pound for pound, he had Benny Montgomery as the 28th best player. But 27th, he had Jaden Hill. So again, at the end of the day, you take your, the eighth overall pick and the uh, – the eighth overall pick and the 44th overall pick. And you say you get the 27th and 28th overall best player. You go, well, okay. We, what if they literally got the eighth best player and the 44th best player? Doesn't that kind of equal, doesn't that amount to almost this, the same thing? And, and it does. Sure, right? right. And, 
Yeah. And it's so much, so much different than all the other sports when, when you do that drafting. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to get to see him play. I don't know if, if, you know, we'll see him in Fresno or if he'll just play in the Arizona complex league, um, which, which there's been a couple guys playing there. We'll, we'll get to uh, Adele Amador. Whoa. If you look at his numbers there, they're off the charts, but we'll see, you know, there's no, that grand junction. That's, this is the first season that we have the draft. Yeah, there's no, no grand junction. Yeah. There's no Boise. Yeah. And it's going to be wild. It's going to be like a premium ticket to go. I actually got to see Benny Montgomery play. There's not going to be too many folks that can say that uh, right. this year because of how things go. So he'll, he'll probably end up eventually playing in the Arizona complex league uh, at some point this season. That's, that's essentially short season rookie ball. They they've been playing for a while now, but that's like the starting point, right? Right there in Scottsdale, comfortable confines of salt river fields. Yeah. I bet they run him out there. <clears throat> I bet he gets out on the field this year, um, but we'll see. Uh, most of these guys, I would assume, will again, because as we've talked about, <clears throat> they have college experience and the Rockies have always been uh, quite a bit more aggressive with their prospects who have college experience. I did mention a second ago, so I want to do this just for fun, go through a few of my favorite names from the draft. Uh, some of these guys uh, may not uh, amount to anything. They may. They may be those those Sam Hilliards and those Scott Obergs and, and the guys that are taken in way late rounds. Uh, who end up doing some awesome things. For now, though, I just enjoy that in the 19th round, they took a young man named Elijah Trek, which I think is a Castlevania character. I'm pretty sure Elijah Trest is off to hunt Dracula. Appreciate that. Um, where do we got? A sneaky good name with the 16th overall pick, Braden Ward. I like that. 16th round. Like yeah. That. Braden and BR and spelled like 16th, sorry. spelled like Raiden from Mortal Kombat, but with the B. Yeah. R-A-I-D-E-N. Yeah. yeah. Spelled interestingly, it's Braden Ward. Uh could uh be the you know normal name of a, a superhero. I know who's gonna be number one on your list. Or at least it better be number one on your list. Yeah, there there's a couple. I, I don't have them totally ordered. I was just going through so let's go back up to talk a little bit more you're talking about made brown so that's not an 80 grade baseball name but it's it's, it's a great baseball name that's a maybe a 60 just mccade brown almost had to have been a ball player um it does sound like a catcher uh, you, you I like admit that. Good I'm, I'm seeing a catcher he's actually yeah. a pitcher but i'm seeing a catcher maybe he has a pitcher, he could have a catcher's yeah. body that that could that could uh, work they, <laughs> That's always how you want to be described, right? Um, Braxton Fulford in the sixth round, a catcher. So there's Hunter Goodman and Braxton Fulford are the catchers that they got in the fourth and sixth rounds. And it's just like, yes. And and I would also go to their law firm of Hunter Goodman and Braxton Fulford. Yeah, it should be um, noted. Hunter Goodman, not related to Drew Goodman in any way. No relation. Um, no relation. Uh, he's actually, I think, uh, the the only the second ca- uh, player from the University of Memphis taken in the top four rounds. He is a catcher, but is more uh, offensive minded, uh, a lot more power over hit, kind of getting Tom Murphy vibes uh, from him from uh, the research that I've done. So we'll kind of, you know, wait yeah. and see what 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 happens with that. They also took, uh, as you said, Braxton Fulford, also a catcher, and you go, but. But but Drew Romo, what what happened there? So uh, I would I would expect Hunter Goodman maybe moves off of the catcher spot, and Braxton Fulford, um, you know, does stick around. Uh, Texas Tech uh, selection uh, from the sixth round, but yeah, great great name, Braxton Fulford. There's going to be a lot more Braxtons Braxton. playing in MLB in the next couple of years. Yeah, Braxton is such a great name. Okay, so sneaky good name off the board, you know, because Tyler. Okay, fourteen Tyler. A lot of there's a million Tylers in baseball, but fine. But Tyler Ross. 14th round pick. That's a that flows so nicely. Tyler Ross. You got to hope. And up. not R O S S Ross. R A S. Yeah, R A S Ross. I'm almost, I'm giving it yeah, a little it's not Ross. Tyler Ross. That's boring. Tyler Ross. A little spice. All right. Runner up for best name from the Colorado Rockies in the 2021. Well, actually, I should let's go with third place. Third place 
is a guy I want to talk a little bit more about in a second because he was who they took in, in the competitive balance round. But left-handed pitcher Joe Rock. So, again, you're not getting a ton of points for Joe, <laughs> but a guy who hucks the rock, who got drafted by the Rockies, Joe Rock, the guy with the rock, the rock. That's okay. That's that's fantastic. You he, just he, have to make sure you don't get rocked because that will be oh yeah yeah that will be some some bad yeah. headlines there but yeah that, came out of the university of ohio not ohio state um uh, you know sits yeah sits like mid 90s uh above average change up which is good at course field yeah. uh as we know uh he was academically ineligible in 2020 so oh, um, i missed that report okay yeah we'll 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 see I if, if rock lives up to the expectations yeah um yeah loving, loving it I'm, I'm rooting for joe rock you've got to be all right in second place the silver medal out of k-state sorry mom <laughs> go jayhawks but still with the 10th round pick 290 overall zach kakashka kansas state university kakashka and zach as far as normal first names go, is one of the spicier ones. Starts with a Z. It's got hard consonants in it. Zach Kakoshka or Kokoshka, I'm not sure. Either way, it's phenomenal. The, that collection, of, it's just incredibly pleasing to say. Coco, maybe. It could be a good nickname. And it's with the H. Yeah. It's Zach with an H. Right. Important. That always I, messes me up. I will guess that's one of those things. I will put the K if it's not i'll put the h for granky i i know now granky's with a k but uh, you're going to pacific northwest for your number one overall pick and i do agree with you it's hands down the best name that they drafted out of the university of oregon former duck current colorado rocky minor leaguer right-handed pitcher in the ninth round 260th pick overall colin kafka Yes. That's an 80 so we, that is Kafka-esque. It, it is, yeah. Franz Kafka and Cullen also has somewhat Cullen. of a sci-fi, you know, uh, darker vibe to it as that is the name of the vampire clan from the Twilight right. series. So right. you, you like that. He's He started uh, with the Ducks there. Uh, you'd like to think, hey, maybe he'd be like another Tyler Anderson. Uh, he's a sinker slider guy. Probably will end up, um, you know, moving to the bullpen at some point, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when he does finally undergo that metamorphosis. I don't know if we'll need to have a trial for that, but I wasn't even ready. I was like standing there wide open for that. And then you just hit me right in the face. And I'm glad he didn't get drafted by Toronto because he should be drafted by a team from right here in America. <laughs> yeah. I got a couple of Kafka books on my shelf. Yeah, I do. I read, I, I, when I read Metamorphosis in high school, I thought it was just one of the coolest things I, I'd ever seen in my life. I was like, this is, I didn't know you could do this. Um, so, yeah, I, we, we will tire not at all of the Kafka jokes if Colin can, can manage himself a nice little professional career here. <laughs> uh, all right, Patrick, on, uh, on a more analytical note, before we move to the guys who've been in the system for a bit and are, and are playing some games right now, any other thoughts you wanted to make sure we don't miss on on these guys here no not really um you know there were two uh division two players that were uh selected jared canned uh in the 17th round uh as well as uh, mason green in the in the 12th round so uh, i found that to be uh, interesting again college guys 19 college or 20 college players and uh just the one high schooler two catchers six outfielders two shortstops 11 pitchers, uh, Florida State, they, they did select two players out of Florida State, Robbie Martin and Taylor Ahern. So those guys, uh, I'm sure, will be bunkmates uh, when they start uh, going out and travel ball. So, Love it. Yeah, good, good, good group overall. And, again, we'll, we'll see what happens, and a lot of it will be on their shoulders and Rocky's development to, to figure it out. But as far as Benny Montgomery and, and Jaden Hill go, those are, those are two good starting points. You know, yeah, for, I did for Colorado see to go forward. Only one update. Did, um, not farms rated, but like of each team's own top 10. 
I think Jonathan Mayo, it might have been Jim Callis. I'm sure those guys get confused for each other all the time. So I'm going to give them both credit. Uh, but they had Benny Montgomery in there at number two ahead of Ryan Rollison behind Zach Veen. So um, they, they, had, they did not put Jaden Hill in the top 10 yet, though. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But that's what I was. He was their only addition to the top 10, but they did slide him in right in at number two. So I was like, oh, there you go. Um, the You, you want to get those those first couple of picks. So um, Yeah, I think, I think that tracks. Um, and again – they they did go out on a limb with with Jaden Hill because he's damaged goods and he has a little bit of history of injuries, but again that's that's what you want to do right when once Jaden Hill, um, you know recovers from Tommy John surgery uh, and we start to see him at some point next year next summer maybe, you know, then you then you see him maybe start to move up on the list. He's probably he's probably around fifteen, right now. Actually, maybe a little higher yeah. than that. I'd say just outside of the top ten. Yeah. Outside of the top ten, yeah. actually. Uh, and again, just with the pandemic, a lot of guys were, uh, a lot of teams just struggling to really um, get boots on the ground and see guys and and take those, you know, players with high upsides because it's very limited. There's very limiting. There's just a black hole for baseball, and we'll talk about it when it comes to the even the minor leaguers, where you know a lot of the like even the international signings where they they got zero work in. And so they're an entire year behind. And so that's that's a definite challenge. Again, all teams have to deal with that, um, which is is not an excuse, right? Because you go, wait a minute, if all teams are kind of dealing with the same thing, let's see you know, how, uh, how each team individually deals with that. And so, again, we got a long way to go until we actually figure out what teams say, are we're able to take know. advantage. Yeah, we yeah. don't know. And that's one of the reasons why even drafting a – or rather, uh, a grading a draft class is so hard. You can say, right. "Whoa, ton of dudes here, ton of dudes that have a lot of potential," but it's it takes a couple of years to figure out what you've got, and even just getting value from someone, even just you know Rico Garcia, you know, what thirty fifth round pick uh, out of Hawaii, like even just getting some value on a couple spot starts in in twenty nineteen was like, hey, that's it's that was something. that was pretty big, yeah, yeah. for for thirty fifth round pick, for, for, yeah. Um, for, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, we got we got a long way to go to know actually how well the Rockies did because this is just that first stage. This is the pupa stage. Let's right. see if they let's see their actual metamorphosis morphosis, well, we're gonna, uh, in, in, into major league ball players. And uh, we, yeah, we got a way to go. We got a way to go until that happens. Yeah, but we're gonna sit, take a look at that next stage here in just a second. You know, these guys are a lot of them long term gambles and and you don't know exactly for sure if you're more of a short term gambler they'll have hop on the DraftKings sportsbook app get a little bit of betting done unfortunately you cannot bet right now exactly what Zach Veen is going to do in 4 or 5 years but you can go and bet on tonight's games i know the rockies aren't playing but nice times sense that sometimes when you're watching baseball and it's not your team DraftKings sportsbook is one of the best ways to make it interesting pick a player to hit a home run pick an over or under on a pitcher you like or dislike uh, to get strikeouts or, or not get strikeouts bet on the team whatever you like it can always make it a little bit more fun getting a little bit of skin in the game and also sometimes fattening up your wallet a little bit so that you can bet on more stuff in the future it is a whole lot of fun they're always throwing you promos that as i've said before basically amount to them giving you free money to bet on whatever you want uh they've got some cool stuff going on right now uh so uh, they got a, we, we were doing olympics let's go it's olympics time baby so you can download the top rated DraftKings sportsbook app now use promo code dnvr when you sign up to to sign up, sign up, turn one dollar into a hundred dollars in free credits if America wins a medal. They usually, they uh, usually do medal like uh? uh uh it says a uh, medal like even says, bronze. I believe that's I believe that counts as a medal. Hot tip, hot tip. If you know your American history, we all know the hundred meter butterfly is where U.S. dominates the uh, butterfly. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so do indeed get in on this one. If you've ever been hesitant, like, look, I want to make sure I get a slam dunk. Uh, <laughs> All of America wins a medal. You'll turn $1 into $100 in free credits. It's code DNVR to turn $1 into $100 in free credits for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700.
Mark's got Gaussman for the win tonight. There you go. Take that. It's a great pick. Taking a Colorado kid. Got to love that. No. All right, Patrick, let's let's start here. Uh, I, I do want to talk about the farm system overall, but we do, quite frankly, have to begin with the Fresno Grizzlies on fire right now and doing some really extraordinary things. They are. They uh, they have the best record in. I'm still going to call it the Cal League. The Cal okay, League. Yeah. <laughs> I can't really say, break I that know. cycle, and it doesn't hurt anyone either. It's just right. they've you know calling it uh, low A West, right? Um, incidentally, right. as I was going through looking at stuff in Double A, they have Double A East, but then there are uh, or no Triple A East. And then they're within AAA East, each division. So there's AAA East Northeast, AAA East Southeast, and AAA East Midwest. I, yeah. Uh, and it's just, we get it. You're going to put branding on it. You're going to have, you know, the Breck Brew division. Fine. Until you get to that, I'm going to call it the Cali. Fine. Yeah, they got they got the best record uh, down there at 45 and 21. I think they've already won 25 games on the road. Yeah. So that's... You can lock them in for the best road team in the system. <laughs> in the system. In, incidentally, I think they have the third best record in all of minor league baseball, tied for the third best record in all of minor league baseball. <laughs> Durham Bulls, uh, Tampa Bay have a better record. Bowling Green Hot Rods, I think, a, a, a tie. Um, so, yeah, they're they're just dominating right now. And I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what they do going forward because a lot of their better players have been recently promoted to high A Spokane. Um, but we, we can still talk about – some of those guys, and, and really, when you're talking about Fresno Grizzlies right now, you have to start with Mr. Zach Veen, the ninth overall pick in the 2020 MLB draft. Yeah, and this is what we're saying, right? So this, a year later, here we are. We were all excited Zach Veen fell to him, but then it's still toolsy high school outfielder. Let's see what happens. He's got to prove it. He got off to a slow start. As you mentioned, no rookie ball. You know, uh, all the other things that we've talked about all episode. And so – a little bit of a slow start, especially when it came to the slugging. It seemed like every time he got on base, he was stealing, and he was getting a ton of stolen bags. Early yeah. On. But he really wasn't hitting the ball hard. But he's come out of that slump in a massive way. He's gotten on base in his last 15 games. He's brought his season line up to a 282, 399, 489. He still are hoping for more slugging there, slash line. But that's an 888 OPS. He's stolen 27 bases and hit nine home runs. And again, almost all, I believe all nine of those home runs have come in the last month uh, because that first several week stretch that hit any. Uh, so it, most of that damage is coming lately, 16 doubles, a couple of triples. Uh, so I think we're going to see the slugging come around. He has been caught stealing 11 times. So that's, he's going every time he's on base, apparently. Um He's but Juan Pierre I, with power. Is that what you're yeah, saying? He's Juan Pierre with power. Loving it. Loving yeah, he's it. he's second in the league in in, uh, in stolen bases with 27, as you said. Uh, leads the team in, in OPS, uh, tied with Ezekiel Tovar uh, with those nine home runs. And you know, before this week, you wouldn't have said, "Hey, is he going to get promoted?" No, he's he's developing his skills. This is his first year. Yeah, first full season, I should say, as a professional. And I think even with this hot streak he's he's been on, it still might be a little aggressive to promote him at this point. I think if he continues to do it, you might see, you know, in the month of, of August, um, maybe even the final month of the season, so halfway through August, maybe you do see him get promoted. But um, I think it's fine. You, you continue to just let him rake. I really think it, again, it's such an unknown yes. with there being only, you know, 120 uh, proper minor league teams now is that, where are these teams going to send these players, right? It's so much different. So now if you've got this influx of new guys coming in, you might have to say, actually, you know what, Zach, go up to, to high A. You're going to be facing a lot of the same, you know, same talent for the most part, rather than bringing these, these um, you know, younger players, other high school kids or, uh, you know, college sophomores, whatever it is, you know, we'll kind of wait and see what happens, you know, with that promotion. Uh, the Grizzlies had this had tied for the second youngest team, uh, of their batters, and yet their pitchers were the oldest in the league. So it's been an interesting blend yeah. of like the young guys on offense and some of the older players 
uh, pitching. So yeah, they've they've been incredibly exciting. Drew Romo right after him, you know, uh, who was a, a competitive balance round a selection. Uh, I, I looked at uh, other catchers in the league that qualified, and of nineteen of them, he has the fifth highest OPS. Yeah, um, behind a guy who Rockies were somewhat attached to, and an A's catcher, first baseman Tyler Soderstrom. Right. Um, who did go somewhere in the teens. So again, Romo's in good company. He's, he's hitting the ball really well. And I think the Cal league is more of a hitters league. So you go, all right, maybe these numbers are a little bit pumped up and whatnot. Um, and that's fine. That's going to happen at, at various levels. It's where you, again, you advance a guy to the next level when maybe he's not ready. His numbers suggest he's ready. But is he? Oh, yeah, That's something no, the coaches no, in the organization yeah. have to decide, right? Yeah. You can't really just look at numbers and know what you've got. Right. You've got 44 games out of a, a yeah. high school catcher. He's yeah. doing well. You want him to continue to, to do well and build on that, especially when hitting was the big question mark with this guy. All reports that I've heard are that the defense is just phenomenal for somebody his age and, and that it's you know going to be major league ready soon but that did, but that doesn't mean you go, okay well then throw them to them <laughs> throw them against those pitchers and completely destroy this kid they've got an opportunity potentially drew romo may never make it to the big leagues drew romo may be yep. like 95 percent of catching prospects who end up being fine uh elias diaz or or tony wolters or or slightly better than but they do have a rare opportunity because star catchers just aren't a thing. Look at the way people reacted to Salvador Perez this last week. That dude is amazing. They're like, oh, this guy in the all-star game. Like people, we love the big, awesome offensive numbers and catchers very rarely put them up. And, you know, it's just not superstar catchers are one of the rarest things in all of professional sports. And they've got an opportunity to grow one here. It's a it's a long shot. It was a long shot when they took him. But you see him doing this right now, batting over 300, finding the power stroke a little bit. He's actually stealing some bases, too, as a catcher. He's got nine stolen bases to two caught stealing, um, 11 doubles, four homers. And he's switch hitting. He's got homers, I believe, from both sides. And you leave him there. And you let him experience that success as long as possible and very slowly move this young man through because you can find catchers who are, who can do the job. Those stars are so rare. You need to give this kid every opportunity he can to eventually become that special ball player. So you got to go very slow, slower with Drew Romo than with anybody else. But it's encouraging to see this stuff right away when we thought, oh, man, going to take a he's going to be a long project and he's out there more than hanging like you said hitters league and all those things but still yeah good good start to his his pro career where yeah. in the in the past you would have thought it could take longer than you know one level every single year um and and now you know again so much more has to happen you go all right i think next year he could be in in, in high a and then a year in double A. And so just kind of, you know, take that natural progression and then, you know, 2025 maybe, or even at the end of 2024, you start seeing it, but that's like a long ways away. You go, okay, it's only 2021 right now. And you're saying if things go really well as they've been, we're still over three years away from getting yeah. him. And that's like, it's maybe the best case scenario. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, you definitely have to be patient with him. Uh, Colin Simpson's been one of those underrated guys who yeah. raked, I think pretty sure he was the MVP uh, in the Pioneer League in, in right. 2019. And he kind of just plays right. all over the place. Uh, yeah. He's doing well. Grant Levine is, you know, he's still scraping along and um, certainly was has been passed by Michael Tobey on, on the depth chart, um, you know, being a, being a high school pick out of New Hampshire. But he's uh, he's finding his stroke a little bit, you know, still only 21 years old. So uh, right. you can kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. The only guys that I'm really like, uh, maybe not down on, but just I was a little bit surprised to see uh, what he's doing is Julio Carreras. Um, you know, him and Eddie Diaz have been bit. kind of, you know, uh, two peas in a pod in a lot of ways, switching off from second base shortstop. Right. Eddie Diaz, 
uh, played well enough, obviously, at, at uh, Fresno that he was promoted uh, to Spokane. Um, you know, his stock has taken a little bit of a hit since being in Spokane, but, um, you know, he was was okay enough in, in Fresno, and they're, they're moving him along, but Carrera's not quite having the, the same level of success, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he does have the five home runs, but beyond that, uh, you, you'd love to see a little bit more out of there. He had been rising. Um, I, I am a little bit excited about Ezekiel Tovar. You mentioned briefly uh, a moment ago, uh, having a nice season. Mm-hmm. Uh, 19 yeah. years old folks yeah Kevin Jack being 19 yeah yeah um uh, so again he's kind of doing it a little bit earlier you mentioned him being tied with Zach Veen with the nine home runs he's also got 18 stolen bases only been caught three times hitting 314 on base 349 slugging 498 uh so uh, again for a shortstop but who's, who's a really toolsy guy who where that where the bat was always the question at 19 to be more than hanging in there and uh, Daniel Montana, who's almost like a lost boy amongst prospects, who had been the guy who had uh, a bunch of prospects shine, and then some of it kind of came off. He didn't develop as fast as a lot of people were hoping. But he's still, you know, he's right there. You'd hope he'd been beyond low A at this point. But still, um, he's showing nicely of himself. Not a ton of pop, uh, but hitting over 300 uh, with four homers, nine doubles. Uh, see if uh, Daniel Montano can, can kind of get it going a little bit. Yeah, on the, on the pitching side, uh, Mitchell Kilkenny uh, has been fantastic. A kid out of Texas A&M who, similar to Jaden Hill, was drafted uh, after having had Tommy John surgery, so you didn't really get much of, uh, out of him. I think he was even selected in 2017 yeah. uh, and uh, didn't make his debut uh, until 2019 with Grand Junction. And so he's finally healthy. He's been since you know, promoted up to Spokane. Same thing with Will Etheridge, uh, another college arm that, uh, had a 32 to two strikeout to walk ratio. So 16 to one, like that's otherworldly. So yeah. he's good moving along. So yep. we've just seen a recent, oh, recent yeah. like spat of, of promotions of these guys um, from, from low A to, to high A probably a, at a much higher rate than we would typically see um, out of, out of almost any organization, I think uh, particularly for the Rockies, but uh, again, with everything being so strange and kind of a lot of people getting pushed out of the game with one less level, it's, hey, you know what, let's let's move this guy on to the next spot and let's just see if we can kind of ramp things up and, and really make up for lost time on everything that was, you know, 2020. So, yeah, yeah. Fresno's been the highlight. Fresno's been the highlight so far. And I'm Sam Weatherly. Don't want to forget about Sam Weatherly with his 80 strikeouts and 31 walks in 58 in this pitch. <laughs> I, are you not entertained? 12.4 strikeouts per nine <laughs> as a starting pitcher. Yeah. A lefty who's sitting on 98 with his fastball, and apparently no one's quite sure where it's going to go. <sighs> Ducking out of the way and shit. But I'm, I'm yeah, so he should shocked. be promoted pretty soon. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking that's going to happen. Let's move up the levels just a little bit. But speaking of moving up the levels, if you're looking to move up the levels in your life, you got to get in touch with our friends over at Ball. If you're looking for some work out here in the Golden area, it's, you know, I was going to say it's between Denver and Boulder, but it's also over a little bit, tucked into the mountains back there. You got to love yourself. The Ball Corporation, man, they're fantastic. There's a reason they named the Ball Arena after these guys. They're looking for manfa- manufacturing position uh, product. So I'll get it. I'll get it. Production technicians, other roles available down here at their plant to make more cans. They've made over 101 billion cans just in 2020. Looking for production technicians, as I said, to make even more aluminum beverage cans play a part in the recycle process and sustainability and being a member of a team where they treat everybody incredibly well and incredibly fairly. And you're treating the planet incredibly well and incredibly fairly. It always feels good to work for a company that you can feel proud to work for. I can tell you from personal experience, friends and family that have done so, that they feel proud every day to go to work for Ball, doing both the work and usually being treated super well and getting paid super well. So uh, you can find them by going to hashtag work at Ball online. You can apply for a position at their aluminum can plant by texting GOLDEN to 77222 or go to jobs.ball.com and search for GOLDEN. That's jobs.ball.com 
and search for Golden or simply text Golden to 77222. And Couple last quick. one for you. Oh, yeah. You, you hopping in? Oh, yeah. Uh, we did have two questions uh, on our Discord. Oh, yes. um, thoughts on the Angels all pitcher draft? We did that a little Pretty bit. Pretty wild. Earlier, yeah. Yeah. We did talk about ultimately it's look, they needed a lot of pitching and being more comfortable and more familiar with certain guys and say, look, we know what we've got here in this. Let's go out and do it. We, you teams can also sign from the independent leagues. So there are still guys that are out there. It's almost like transfers like in soccer. So they'll be able to do that. But look, sure. So let's we got we got more opportunities to to throw that dart and hit a bullseye if we just have 20 pitchers for right now and we can figure it out. So far I work with Reed Detmers. He might even be up uh for the for the second half of the season. A, a guy that the the Rockies uh we we call we were all excited for Reed Detmers last year. We take him if Veen hadn't still been on the board actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so Detmers is is already, you know, doing really well in in double A. So it's more about the Angels kind of needing to fill that role. Uh, and then the the I last think if one. The Rockies had done that, by the way. It would have been universally panned and considered a massive joke. And it's funny to me that the Angels, who were also terrible, people are like, hmm, what are they on to? Like, maybe. Well, not. I don't think anyone's giving the Angels any praise. Not, not they yet. might not be crapping on them, but they're not giving them praise either. Right, right, right. Um, the other question was: are there any top 100 prospects that maybe the Rockies could get for Trevor Story? Probably not. So. Um, that's, you know, there's even there's even guys that are off of the top 100 that are probably unlikely, yeah. you know, to be left exposed by a team or for a team to say, hey, we'd be willing to to do that. Even if you had a package of Story and Gray and throw in CJ Crone or something like that for a team really in need of those specific things, it would be hard to really grasp a, a top 100 prospect. I mean, you got number 96 shortstop Oswald Perez if he goes to the Yankees. A uh, guy last year we talked about in the draft. Uh, he's number 67 overall prospect, a high school kid, Austin Hendrick, outfielder. Uh, you know, the, the Mets have uh, Matt Allen, who, okay, uh, maybe have a, uh, you like a right handed arm, but really what they want to do is try to get those like the, the next tier of guys. If they're not top 100, they're just off that. They've been scouting them, they've been looking at them. It's kind of how, you know, the Padres ended up with Fernando Tatis Jr. They saw Tom him. He's ended up with Armand Marquez. There you go, right? You you just before you know a guy's price becomes the price and he becomes a marquee name. You got to get him before that. So if you could look to Oakland, maybe Robert uh, Poisson, shortstop, who Give me the A's, yeah, the Rays signed him for five million dollars. So that's a pretty big bonus. I don't think they would entirely want to just give away. Um, but he's one. He's sixth in their system. Uh, Mets JT Ginn, uh, who we saw last year in the draft second round pick if you're looking for something like that. So nothing that jumps right out that makes you go, whoa, we got who, but guys you can wish for. And and maybe guys that are like damaged goods. That's what El Harris Montero was, where at 19 years old, he's the MVP of the Midwest League. And, you know, then has a, a bad 2019, 2020 is just kind of an obscurity. The Cardinals say, hey, we can move on from this guy, especially because we're getting Nolan Arenado. We don't really need a third baseman yeah. slash first baseman. Because we got Arenado and Goldschmidt, and so the Rockies go, sure, we'll take him if if you're kind of down on him, because we can still project him to have a lot of good value, yeah. and we'll talk about him in, in a little bit on so. that list. Yeah, that I saw. Yeah, so you might, you're not going to get that top 100, but you might get a guy that in a year becomes a top 100. Guy. Exactly, and that's right. just as good. Right. Um, and that's where I think a lot of these next guys that we're going to look at here, and we'll, we'll go through these relatively quickly i guess as we move do is stay by team go up to spokane real fast yeah there's not going to be too much to say right. unfortunately about hartford and, and albuquerque I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll hit you with some bullet points there's been some disappointments actually not too many disappointments there's just it a just void is yeah 2016 right. is is a uh 26 uh, no yeah 2016 they they um was the riley pine draft 2017 you lost your first overall pick um you know, from for signing Ian Desmond. So right there, that's a big void of talent, and that's that class that's coming through there. And so it's uh, it's it's lackluster, and, and there's an explanation. But uh, Spokane also has a really good squad. Willie McIver uh, was promoted to Double A. He was doing great. A name that a flash from the past, Hunter Stovall. Yeah. Uh, he now leads the team in, in OPS. He's back. He's a guy that again. He's a good organizational body to have. Um, 
Tolia and Brenton Doyle have been kind of the leaders of the team batting yeah. in the middle of the order. Uh, Tolia it does lead the team in home runs and is tied for second in the league with 11 homers. Uh, Aaron Schunk has just been okay. Yeah. Uh, Isaac Collins has really been the one where if you say, hey, well, uh, of the names that I don't know, Isaac Collins has been been the guy. Uh, he's another one who did get uh, started out at Fresno. He's since been promoted to Spokane, uh, hitting towards the top of the order, doing really well at the plate. Uh, middle infielder, second base type that wouldn't shock you if they, they gave him the Garrett Hampson treatment and you, and you stick him in the outfield for a little bit. He's been all right. Uh, Daniel Montano is now playing at Spokane. Right. Pitchers, Hell Chris Olivares, he's holding up his uh, his own, you know, ERA north of six. But again, he's one he's of the youngest players in that league. Pushed faster on purpose. They've challenged For him sure. and, and they're expecting yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah, Nick Bush uh, has been somewhat of a sleeper starter. He has been promoted to double A. So, again, you're seeing these guys where they've had at least a little bit of success. Uh, most of it you have to believe is legit. And even if it isn't, maybe you just go, look, we got to create room for other people. You know, it's kind of similar to, you know, when I was when I was a younger man and I was into umpiring, you know, I had an, an uncle who hammered it into me, like how difficult it is to be an umpire, that lifestyle, and how you could be the best AAA umpire. Uh, but if you're one of the older ones, you could just get pushed out because it's a numbers game and say, look, this guy that's two, three years younger, he needs to come up and he's the young guy. You're the old guy. Yeah, you're great. But you know what? You you just get pushed out, and so we're seeing these guys get baseball. shifted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. happen. There's an end to that, and it's right at Major League Baseball, where you can be Joe West and still out there on yes. World Series games. But below that, that's right. Get screwed over. That's right. Exactly right. It's so we're seeing these guys fluctuating. It's in, the, in the same with players. Once you've got that Albert Pujols contract, you still have a roster spot, despite the fact that you can't run no more. Where like some young guy probably yep. you know. Totally the same. Absolutely. Christian Walker is a great example of that because was a huge prospect with the Orioles and was yeah. blocked by Chris Davis in his contract. And it took yeah. him going to Arizona before he could finally mm -hmm. get going. Uh, Dugan Darnell, which is a great story. He's pitching really well. Uh, he's with yeah. high A now after having a lot of success down in Fresno. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in seeing what happens with the Fresno and Spokane teams because they definitely have the most talent. Uh, at the start of the season, I think that's still true. And so Fresno is having a lot of that success. A lot of those guys moved up to Spokane. So can that kind of, you know, uh, help uh, Spokane out a little bit? They're six games under 500 right now. Again, win-loss record isn't that important, yeah. unless you're doing really well. And then it's hugely well, it's awesome. important. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Then it matters. Uh, up at Double A, uh, as you mentioned, this is where it really starts to thin out quite a bit. Yeah. But the yard goats. As you mentioned before, Eliharos Montero really is the kind of star attraction there right now. Uh, you know, I, I can appreciate that Taylor Snyder is having a nice season as well. But Montero being a part of the Arnado deal now being pretty consensusly considered a top 10 Rockies prospect himself. 13 home runs. It is second on the team behind Snyder with 17. But one of those things is maybe a little bit more. Uh, predictable than the other. Uh, you got to go a little bit with scouting reports sometimes. Better contact for him. Hitting 274. Uh, very, very solid on base. 364. Slugging 502. Finally, somebody slugging over 500. Way to go for an APS, OPS of 8. Uh, 67. No stolen bases for him. And again, remember, we got all those guys in the other league just running all over the place. Not Montero's game. He's a uh, He's definitely just one of those big bopper guys, but he's bopping, and and you love to see it. He's also the youngest on the team, too. He's the youngest yeah. offensive player at, at 22 years old. So you think about that, hitting in the middle of that lineup in a, a not-so-friendly hitter's environment. So to have those 13 home runs and, and 44 RBIs is kind of a big deal. As you said, Taylor Snyder, a little bit old for the level. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens if, if he ends up getting promoted up to, to Albuquerque, though – He's, he's kind of blocked a little bit by Alan Trejo there, and, and rightfully so. But between Montero, Snyder, and Sean Bouchard, who's always been kind of um, an organizational guy that I've yeah, kind yeah. of always liked, similar to Casey Golden. He's, he's always had, got good numbers. His injury issues. Always has, you know, yeah, really good numbers. And then Coco Montez has been another one of those guys who's hit at just about every level. He's probably been their fourth best hitter uh, with OPS of, of 755. Um, not stealing as many bags as he has in the past, but, um, you know, Doing pretty well. They're, uh, I, I think, 
I think the Yardgos have only won seven games on the road all year. So if we if we're looking for a minor league doppelganger Thank for the Rockies, you. it's probably Hartford. Um, although Hartford's twenty five games under five hundred, where the Rockies are you know, obviously doing much better than that. But also packing out Dunkin' Donuts Park. That's that's right. a it's a great stadium, one of the better yeah. Double A stadiums. So nice. offensively, those have kind of been you know the 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 biggest players. It is a tough league to hit in. It it, it plays pretty true, um, which is to say, it is more of a uh, pitcher's ballpark. And it is sad to report that since William McIver hit those three home runs, he has been struggling. Yeah. Very, very badly. But yeah. that's okay. Plenty plenty of time left in the season to kind of right that ship, get familiar with his pitching staff, talking with him uh, before the Futures game. He was a real hype man for that Fresno pitching staff, or Spokane pitching staff. It yeah. was amazing yeah. hearing him talk. So I imagine he's getting the feel for those uh, those Hartford pitchers, some of which are having some solid seasons. And, uh, and, and he'll have some really good things to say about them as well in, in, in the short time. Yeah. Particularly, yeah, any, any of the pitchers stand out to you there for, for double-A? Tommy Doyle has been struggling. He's battled injury yeah. injuries. He's uh, been on the aisle since June 29th. That's um, been unfortunate. Uh, Ryan Feltner pitched really well at uh, Spokane, 2.17 ERA. Still been really good at Hartford, 3.64. So um, you like what you see at that former Buckeye. Carl Kaufman was promoted after two really good starts in Spokane. Uh, does have an ERA north of 10. Yeah. Uh, he's a former second round pick in the 2019 draft who was shut down because he had a very long season at the University of Michigan when they went to the College World Series. So, you know, pitching kind of figuring out a couple things there in Hartford. Yeah. Uh, I was the biggest thing there is that Carl Kaufman was promoted beyond yeah. that. You know, I like to see that. Going to deal with that is going through his Ryan McMahon first months at Hartford experience. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, yeah, up to, uh, up to triple a, the topes. I don't like that as a, as a short, that's, that's been a, the topes. The yeah. topes. Mm, that's bad. Last place, uh, but not 25 games under, they're only 11 games under no. 500. And, and even just sort of generally frustrating uh, performance. I think the only one, and it's like, you're, you're really going to get excited about this, but actually, yes, even though the numbers are not the best on the team at all, it's for me, it's Ryan Valade is the guy that you're excited about because again, he's hanging. You look at a 254 batting average, 325 on base, 366 slugging. What he's only got a 691 OPS. That's not good, but he's one of the younger players in yeah. the level. He's been very quickly moved through the Rocky system. Uh, he's changed position uh, a couple of times shortstop to third base from third base to left field uh, he's also played a lot of extra baseball in terms of like going out to arizona fall leagues and doing all this other kind of stuff so he's he's been someone they've been kind of pushing and, and seeing how he responds and he had a, he started really well and had some early home runs he's cooled off a bit but he's hanging there in triple a when really by age and experience level he could just as easily be raking in double a but arguably that wouldn't be as good for him and if they see the maturity in this young man uh for him to be able to break out and be a bigger asset for them sooner and like patrick was saying earlier about you know who who have they drafted who or who could they trade for who's not in the top 100 prospects right now but might be a year from now ryan valade is a guy i think is, is already in the system who's not a top 100, 150 prospect right now, but a year from now very easily could be seen that way. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair comparison for for him. And at, at 22 years old, it doesn't you know, seem that young because, shoot, Juan Soto, it, it feels like he's been an all-star for three years <laughs> and right. he's 22 years old. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, but by comparison, Taylor Motter, a, a former, uh, I don't even want to say Mariners prospect because – He's been he's bounced around a lot. He's yeah, he, he leads the PCL and OPS, but he's 31 years old. You know, yeah. he's he's one of the older he's the uh, oldest guy uh, basically on the team. So that's it is wild to think there's a nine year separation from that. So yeah, the numbers aren't great, but uh, I'm not too concerned. And that that's another thing too I wanted to point out for anyone uh, trying to evaluate players. What you can do is if you go to like a league website, you can find out what the league average is. So like again in the PCL where you know, everyone has 15 home runs after <laughs> right, the right. month of April. You go, well, then how, who's, who's really above average? If everyone has above average numbers, 
they can't all actually be above average. Look for the league averages, you know, and, and batting average, on base slugging, all of that, and kind of compare. And same is true for starting pitching, right? The, it, you're getting shellacked. I think at one point there wasn't a starting pitcher at, uh, in Albuquerque that had an ERA under seven. And you go, well, what if league ERA is six and a half? You go, shoot, that seven ERA is pretty darn good. Then they're fine. That's not bad. Yeah. That's, you know, that's like a three. That's like a three point eight ERA. A couple of years ago, when the ball was juiced and the and the wind was especially bad out there, I think the league ERA in the PCL was north of six. I'm I'm almost certain yeah. of it. I remember looking that up. Twenty nineteen was was a rough year. Connor <laughs> Joe and Rio Ruiz are are putting up huge numbers. Of Rio yep. Ruiz is is a name that maybe we mentioned when they picked him off of waivers, but maybe um, again, he's, he's a little older and, and he's in the Connor Joe camp at 27 years old. And so, you know, is he, a, is he truly a, a, he a, a member of this organization for the future to dream and hope on? No, but again, he could be a, a guy that, that fills in and uh, plays an important, you know, part in, in the Rocky success the next couple of years, similar to a Josh Fuentes, right? Alan Trejo is playing really well, getting yep. more glove first than anything, but, um, he's, he's been hitting, you know, really well. So you like to see that kind of development and then Sam Hilliard, you know, uh, he's up now, you know, because of the, the COVID protocol stuff and, uh, and doing his thing, but he's, he's very much been all or nothing with yeah. hitting home runs, making big plays in the outfield and striking out right and not drawing too many walks too. So, yeah. um, uh, that that's been rough. And as far as starting pitchers go, uh, Zach Ross cup. I would say remember him, but hey, you've hey. seen him. He, he's actually pitched um, 0.52 ERA in 17 innings in AAA. Wow. That's pretty good. So he's figured some things out, and he very well could be a, a, a part of a reliever, at least. a three-headed monster, if you will, in the Rockies' bullpen. I don't know if you noticed, but the Rockies have had three lefties in their bullpen All of a sudden. the last couple of games between Bowden, Lucas Gilbreth, and now – Zach Roscoe. So you you like to see that. That's interesting, and, yeah. And the final name worth mentioning is Frank Duncan. Uh, yes, oh, that Frank Duncan. 29-year-old veteran, uh, yet to ever make a major league debut from the University of Kansas. He was a 13th round pick by the Pirates in 2014. Played independent ball last year in order to try to pay the bills somewhat um, throughout the, the pandemic. But uh, at AA, uh, through eight starts, he had a 2.76 ERA. And so far in, uh, I think just two starts and 12 innings pitch 1.50 ERA. I think he might even be starting today for Albuquerque. So it's the new again, Tim Melville. He's a hundred percent. He's Tim Melville. Maybe, maybe a little Ashton Godot where you're like, he's young enough. So it could be. And so again, a nice story to see anytime someone's having success again, sometimes that can, that can bleed into other guys success. Yeah. Say, hey, what are you doing? Right. Or you know, kind of being a, a beacon of, of of responsibility or a beacon of uh, you know expertise, so to speak. Like, what are you doing right that maybe I need to do? Or what's your story? What were the mistakes you made before you kind of figured it out? What's your dedication level like? Maybe I need to step it up to be a little bit more like Frank Duncan. And I think at the end of the day, we all should ask ourselves, what should we do to be as good as Frank Duncan? Well, there's one thing I'm planning on doing to be just as good as Frank Duncan. As soon as we're done wrapping up with this show, which we're doing right now, I'm going to go have myself some Hassle Cattle Company Wagyu beef. I'm going to beef up myself just like I assume Frank Duncan. You can't be a small guy. You can't be named Frank Duncan and be five foot five. In my mind, this guy is 6'5", 280, and just bring in the meat, right? But you know who also brings the meat? Our friends at Hassle Cattle Company. They got Wagyu beef that could change your life. It's absolutely delicious. It's really, really good for your body because they don't have any of those hormones or antibiotics in there, which is great for the animals, great for the environment. And it's better for your wallet because you're not paying too much for it. Oftentimes, you're paying less than you would for much grosser beef that's not anywhere near as good and is pumped full of nonsense at the grocery store. So don't, don't buy your beef at the grocery store. Go to HassleCattleCompany.com. That's H-A-S-S-E-L-L CattleCompany.com. Use promo code DMVR10. You'll get 10% off. And if you order over 200 bucks, you'll get free shipping. I cannot recommend it more highly. I not joking when I say they make up at least 60 to 70% of my diet these days. They should make up at least some percentage of yours. Again, it's H A S E L Cattle Company.com. All these young prospects, farm system needs to get beefier. 
They all need to get beefier. Can't wait for the day that Zach Veen and Benny Montgomery beef out and they're both six foot four, six foot five monsters with elite speed and above average power. Ready for those days in, in our future at some point. So, uh, and we didn't mention, uh, uh, there was one last name, I guess I wanted to, Ryan Rollison, who did have to get shut down for the rest of the year, who, who had been promising. And it's it's very frustrating. Colton Welker, who we know also, you know, is out with the suspension thing. And while both of those things are very frustrating, um, I don't think either has had much of their ultimate timeline delayed by more than we probably would have seen them both debut this year, like in September, almost Correct, certainly. Yeah. But I still think we're going to see both players at the beginning of next year, depending on how the roster is shaking out and all of that. Guy, both of those guys could have a shot to make the team out of camp next year. So while it's delayed, you know, by a month, probably by this particular September, and, and it's frustrating and it's irritating, luckily both those guys had quite a bit more polish on them than some of these other, like if Zach Veen was hurt right now, that'd be so much more annoying. Um, you know, so it's like, I think we're, we're ready to see those guys too, but you can't forget that Colton Welker and Ryan Rollison are also a, a big part of this picture that the Rockies are going to show up in and camp with next year. So a lot of yep, interesting names you've run through today. They will be a factor. Yeah. The, the only other thing I do want to throw in is uh, in the 12th round, the Rockies, uh, they selected Mason Green. Uh, he's one of the division two players. Uh, left-handed uh, starting pitcher. Uh, and maybe they were hoping that uh, in the 13th round, um, a certain player would fall to them. Unfortunately, it did not. So uh, with the first pick in the 13th round, pick number 373, the Pittsburgh Pirates out of the University of Nevada did select Owen Schartz. So that's, um, you know, I don't know if Rockies are going to look back on that and if Bill Schmidt will be asked questions. I don't know if anyone's tough enough to ask him, no, brave enough to ask him. But um, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll get up uh, the courage to say, dude, what happened? So? Owen Schartz. You, if you had to do it over again, you know, Schartz, <laughs> would, you, would you have approached it differently? With an S or a Z? I think a Z. No, put me on the spot. No, oh, no, it's with an S. Oh, it's it's spelled properly. I'm not sure which is worse. It's spelled I'm properly. No, sure. the name should have a Z, but it's actually spelled oh properly. Oh no, his family invented it from the old country. It's you know, hey, be known for something like like the name Smith. You know, it means you build something like a leather right. smith, metal right. smith, shards. Oh. You're like, oh man. <laughs> what happened to that guy over there? What did he do in his cave? And um, that's their family note. name. Okay. Oh, I think I, I, we're going to wrap this up before we get canceled. And Will says, of course, he can be a streaky player. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. How are we going to go out on that? I'm going to leave people with that thought. All right, go off with the rest of your day. But that's what we're doing. Thanks. That so comment much. was drizzling, man. Come on. That was <laughs> in all seriousness. You know what? If you, if you need a little extra protein, Go have yourself a Yoohoo. Uh, we're all bad people. The Rockies pick it back up with a weird two game set. Seattle's in town for the next couple of days. Then they're off again and then they hit the road. Hang out with us for all of that on social media at Patrick D. Lyons, at Drew Creaseman, at DNVR underscore Rocky. Subscribe to the DNVR.com so you don't miss out on any of that written content. I published my. Uh, big wrap-up thoughts on the entirety of All-Star Week just a few minutes before coming live here today. So make sure you head over and you read that. You subscribe. You get all the discounts and Discord access and all that fantastic stuff that you get. Otherwise, we can only ask that you keep being absolutely awesome baseball fans out there. We'll keep being absolutely Patrick Lyons and Drew Creaseman in here. And until next time, we will see you at the ballpark.